Thank you very much, Andrew Bullshaw, writer, director of Lavender, and Nicole Pop, producer of Lavender, joining us today and being prepared to be interviewed and talk to us about this uh, really moving film. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Excellent. So, Andrew, writer, where does the concept come from? So, um, it was one that started to come to me. I've been farming over a number of years, and uh, there's actually two factors to it. Uh, without sort of spoiling the whole lot, um, there was one, one element um, that, that eventually paired up with the other. What we're talking about really is, uh, is a non existence. Um, sorry, an existence, but yet not actually being sort of describable um, of how it works. So the idea of um, the first one came to me, um, I won't reveal that one, but that led on to um, dementia. So what we're talking about is dementia, where um, it's a mother-daughter story, um, and we're talking about the, the decline in health of the mother, um, who's a person living with dementia. Now, Dementia for me, so some of my own experiences of people living with dementia come into this, uh, but also then as horrible as dementia is, is also intriguing of how does it affect a person um, that say if, if we're having a conversation in a room and there's another person in the room who's a person living with dementia, then how, how, how where are they? Because we could be having a very, um, we're, we're engaged in a conversation um, but the other person isn't so much, but yeah, they're present here, and then they could blurt something out. So we've worked with a number of uh, dementia reps, dementia-friendly uh, organisations, charities, and medical professionals to sort of look at the accuracy, accuracy of this. Um, and in some ways, it, it almost can't be explained that the person could be living out what we're looking at here as being in existence, um, but yet, years ago so back in the memories of, of many years ago so what we've really tried to show through lavender is um and, and call it well, to look at this as has been a dementia like state that the person's there living out their uh, existence which can be in inside the mind and the memories years ago but yeah they're very present and they can blurt something out and it can be from that time years ago uh, but to them it makes sense, but to us it's not quite fitting in with the settings of the engaging conversation. Um, so I tried to show that of, of how a person exists whilst living with dementia. And the concept then of lavender goes on to where um, and we, we refer to these what are two, two timelines that run parallel. Um, and this goes right back to the beginning, um, pitching this to Nicole, of what we refer to as lavender world and the real world. So um, Fern, who's the elder lady, the main character, um, we see her through both of these where the lavender world is, is trying to show more her perspective on things and her in a dementia-like state mm -hmm. and it runs alongside the real world and eventually they come together and um, there's explanation of how, uh, how it fits in of, of those uh, circumstances and, and the story actually came very late in this. It was about the concept first of all, with these two ideas and with the lavender world form of the real world. The storyline just really cuts right through the middle of that. Um, so this was uh, this was how, how the ideas came to me to begin with, to, to fit all this together. My, my first, the first person I approached was the cinematographer, Theo Kirkpatrick, who's brilliant. Um, this is very skilled with the camera and and he was the most, uh, what I felt was an, an achievable person yeah. on non-low budget yeah. um, that it would, I felt it would take a lot to, to sort of put it to him and, and get him involved. And fortunately he went for it, he liked the idea. Um, and everything you see in Lavender by just a, a few short introduction to Lavender World shots, each one of the shots is all done in camera. So what, what I mean by that is there's there's some effects that you see. There's actually an effect called lens whacking. Now that was Theo's um, idea to bring that in on how I was putting across to him, I'd like the dementia like state to appear. And he almost needed like three hands to do this contraption with his mm. camera 
whereas actually pulling the lens away from the camera yeah. to let enough light in to affect the sensor and give you those effects that you see, yes. particularly in the lavender world uh, settings. Um, so great skill from VO yeah. Cinematographer. Um, I'd, I already had quite a good team from working on other projects previously. Um, the, the last project I also sort of at the start of this project run alongside was doing a web series, a series called Rebound, um, and then the team of the crew members that had involved with that, um, such as Adam Padley, who's the my editor, um, has, has stuck with me for a number of projects and he's very committed in this way, so he, he was happy to look at going on to Lavender. Mm. Uh, Andy Lowe and a number of the other sound guys, um, again, uh, keeps me involved in that way and, and tell the story through the sound because it kind of all comes together. Yeah. Um, our composer, Nicole, might want to say, but very well done music. Um, again, working with him on, on so sort of really like it to have this kind of repetition to it because mm -hmm. uh, although it's going back to what to us might appear as memories, it's also this dementia state and, and she's living out this existence that it also needs to be progressive. So again, I'll let Nicole talk more probably on the music and who the composer is, um, but with it, um, it's achieved nomination yes. at Romford yes. uh, yeah. Film Festival. Uh, thanks very much to Romford for that. Um, but the music's spot on. So, you know, yeah. all coming together, um, each area is equally important, really. It's a combined uh, collaboration. Yes. For me, um, in a kind of focal point of being the director, being able to work with each department and each uh, team and each individual in this way, what, for me, made a really big difference on this, this occasion and what I'd maybe perhaps not quite had, or certainly not in the same way, so what I did have in Lavender where it was very noticeable was on the shoots they, they were sort of really slick um, mm -hmm. because of um, finding a producer and production company so it's on the pictures Nicole um, I, I, was, I was lucky in who, who can I find and, and uh, we've met, we met not too did, yeah. long or, or not. A high peak on it. Yeah, uh, it's oh, like the part of the film vault. Yeah, Andy Green film vault. So discovered right. Nicole and then met at high peak and got to know each other and, and uh, Nicole. Had to try and not give away that we were absolutely selecting his film as well. So it's like, oh yeah, I've seen <laughs> on the rack. It's really great. Yeah, yeah. Well, you just never know. It just might end up in the official selection, and it did. <laughs> that, that was my it was my last project as a student, first uh, project to attempt film festival, a film called Anorak, um, and yeah, really sort of opened the door for me yes, there. That yes. absolutely wanted to approach Nicole and pitch Lavender to Nicole. So you approach Nicole, Nicole, you read script. Yeah. First thing you do? Yeah. I yeah. Did you pitch it properly? The concept. It wasn't all, quite the yeah. Again, you yeah. Pit, he actually pitched to me. Okay. Which usually you'd go with the short, you get a script. But yeah, you pitched to me because we met for coffee, didn't we? And you so thought, yeah, I want to be on board with this. Yeah, because I really like the idea. Yeah. My grandma has dementia as well, so it's yeah. really, it was a really good way to explore it in a unique way as well. Mm, because mm, mm. it's not, I don't think, well, it's definitely not been done this way. You know, no. a lot of it is, you know, you see it from our our world. But I like the fact that it delved in and out of. Yes. The lavender world, as we as we named it, the lavender, lavender world, yeah. didn't we? Really, <laughs> yeah. To yeah, which is really interesting, and I did want to ask you about that. Could you just elaborate on why it's called lavender? Um, yes. So the chosen setting, I guess, then is um, in lavender fields. Uh, again, that's another one. Working with production company, working with Nicole's producer, finding locations, appropriate locations, and. All agreements in that it's way. Not easy finding a lavender field. No. We would have, like, you know, we were looking for yeah. a yeah. large space, weren't we? And would lots it, of would bees, I would think. You see them in shot, the bees. Yeah, there's there was bees actually. Yeah. They it don't do really sting anyway, those yeah. bees. It was a high to summer as well. It was, yeah. it was, was it two years ago? Yeah. So two years ago, the it was so summer. hot over summer. So we'd have loved to have gone over to France <laughs> in the vast. <laughs> but Nicole didn't get the budget for you. But why lavender? Um, th a, because you've got you've got the bit at the beginning where you're telling us about yeah. the, you know this purple doesn't you know really exist. Okay, yeah, so yeah. and then you mention in the film about filling in the gaps. Yeah. So that that's very much it. Um, I'm being cautious of, of how much to give away without being too much of a spoiler. Yes. Yes. But yeah. There's, there's the there's the purple 
theme in which we use the grade in a particular way as mm -hmm. a as a significant purpose, shall we say, um, that adds to the story then I guess as well in how it's told. Yeah, definitely. And so lavender was very fitting in that way. Um, but there's other added bits to lavender when you work with uh, people who are uh, who care for people with dementia and um, I've become aware also of lavender seem to have a, um, an effect in, in its scent as well, it being very mm. potent. Mm. Um, so being, Definitely very potent. I, I believe it has some uses um, for dementia in that way, in, okay. in sort of stimulating mm. a person, bringing them mm. back round. Mm. Although I considered that, I found that would be very difficult to try and get into a film. And we'll be mm. talking like a, a 4D type film to get the, yes. fill the, yes. fill the yes. uh, cinema room with, um, with, with lavender scent to show that. So, so as, as a, for any budding writer slash filmmakers out there, how, is it, how much of an importance is it to bring someone like Nicole on as a producer? Yes, um, so, so for and, me... And if you can both answer, your role as a yeah. producer, how that manifests itself in a film and then what value that is to you as a director, yeah. writer? Absolutely, okay, so for me really it's, um, it takes a big weight off because mm -hmm. there's even for a shot like this there's a there's a lot of um coordinating um availability of people involved and again non and low budget um production brings its own challenges there um so to taking that weight off of the logistics of putting the film together really allows you as a as a writer director to or mm -hmm. director to really focus on the creativity of the mm -hmm. film and and all the um, people to collaborate with in that way of actually getting the story, the uh, mm. the visuals, the, the sound, the music, where you want it mm. to be. Mm. It could almost be a distraction to be directing and producing, yeah. um, but, but it's got the challenges there of actually having to bring all that together and the uh, creative side of it. So, your, your producer on Lavender, yes. what challenges do you face? Uh, Any? Lots. <laughs> lots? <laughs> well, you get your One or two? Yeah, I mean, you, I think you face all sorts of ch uh, challenges when you're a producer anyway. And, I, and from the perspective of a, of a director, because I'm also a director, mm. I want it to be a producer that, uh, that I would want as a, as a director because you're absolutely right, it takes off so much weight mm -hmm. because, I mean, I've directed and produced my own films and it's so much work. Mm. There's a lot of involvement, like the script development on there. We worked on yeah. the script together and um, through to casting, which was great fun. We had a fun day yeah. casting and then uh, getting bits of funding together and just going to finding locations and going yeah. to Walsway Lavender as well. We went up there, that's where we shot, which was yeah. fantastic. So that was very much a, a kind of a joint thing for casting? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Well, obviously it's Andy's decision, but um, yes. as a producer, I, I would like to be, as any producer would. Yeah, like to be involved with the casting yeah, yeah. because then and you, did you have any of those actors in mind or did you literally just receive lots of auditions and um did you have anyone in mind i think they were all discovered think, really yeah. through audition Pop um paul? paul perhaps yeah paul, um maybe. paul was but suggested quite a late, yeah. later um neil taylor so neil's not technically an actor but he's a dementia champion mm -hmm. um I, I think if i remember right i'd, I'd uh, considered Neil and we found to be involved and they did and he's done a great job of it. Neil's the uh, care home manager. Um, but yeah, I think and aside from that most... Lee, Liam? Liam, yeah, we, um, that was again yourself. We, uh, um, we were looking for an actor for a long time for that yeah. role. That went, that took, because it took a lot of our time over um, mm. six months or so, didn't it? The to, doctor. This is to, to, to the doctor. Yeah. Um, and then I was shooting my short, I was in pre-production for my short, uh, Asphyxiate, and I was speaking to Anthony Quinlan, who worked on Emmerdale, and he knew Liam, who worked on Corrie, or Emmerdale, Emmerdale yeah. and yeah. suggested them, and they came on board, that, and that's somehow... Yeah how it worked, which is, Fantastic. it helps massively. Really does help. And that's what helps with, ha with having other people on your team as yeah, well as the producer. Of course, it just of course, makes yeah. things easier. Cause you can, you know, you can get things that you, let's say for example, um, 
sorry, Richard, uh, the composer, who yeah. we were talking about before. Um, I think I just introduced you to him because yeah. he'd done all my shorts and yeah, perfect okay. fit. And a big re- shout out for Richard because personally, He's I think that was a lovely score. He's really amazing. Really beautiful. Really yeah. beautiful score. I get a lot of uh, composers emailing me and I'm like, I'm still got. <laughs> I'd rather use Richard. Which is really hard, but he is very good. Yeah. Very good. So, just as we start to wrap up now, can you tell us what's in the future? What have you got coming ahead now? Um, okay, so going sort of going back to one of your earlier points a little bit, but for, for me, I, I, I feel or I hope um, in, in my film work that it shows that I, I feel I'm quite original. Um, maybe not groundbreakingly original film in each case but at least some amount of each of my creations so we'll say that come from me being the writer um, I feel I have an amount of originality to them. Um, I came from years ago, a little acting background, uh, did a lot of writing and I've got a number of feature films and some TV series in writing and I'd really like to see if and where things might go for looking at those and here's my next piece of work in writing that's a comedy TV series for example here's a comedy series I've done previously a miniseries and here's a short film that's comedy to show I'm capable of and see uh, if we can achieve funding if we can achieve uh, production company that can put a skilled crew around me in that way so there's 10 or more projects I would love to do but if any one of those I'm looking for a producer <laughs> not because I won't produce, producers, yeah. produce your work but because okay. I well, decided to... I think through. any budding producers or any you know, established producers, if they see Lavender, they're yeah, going to yeah. see the power of it. They're going to see it's such a moving piece and the incredible, I won't say potential, because obviously you've already proved that, but you must have some amazing work there waiting to be done. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for submitting to Romford Film Festival. It's a really, really moving piece that I personally really, really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. You know, you genuinely, much. hand on heart. Um, and we wish you every success. Thank you both Thank you. so much. Thank, Thank you, you Angie. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you.